Let's do a deep dive into the psychology of authoritarianism. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Eric, what's up? Hey, Happy New Year, Tom. Uh, I'm calling to uh, vigorously agree with your assessment that this is not about a man. This is about the American people, a, a percentage of them. Um, and also to agree with Marsha, a caller earlier, that humans having a predilection for authoritarianism uh, I would say that uh, monotheistic religions are the gateway drug to that, and especially the way Americans practice them as a, as a bludgeon against those they disagree with rather than, uh, you know, obey the tenets of, you know, peace and brotherhood. Um, but you need to uh, drop a couple more jigsaw puzzle pieces in. Your theory is solid, and you can trace it back very directly to Pat Buchanan's run and the way that was a white, nativist militant kind of movement and it that was, was you're talking 1980 when when he when he was in the primary with reagan uh no later 96 i think it was when dole got the nomination was it ah uh, okay yeah may well be I, yeah and he and then he splintered off he couldn't get the gop and he ended up with a very brief attempt at an independent run as i recall I'm, i may have the year wrong but it right. was Around that time, and simultaneous to that, this is when David Duke was uh, achieving state elective office in Louisiana. So the the, the drive and the, the willingness to participate in that kind of movement was there. And I would argue that the tech bubble of the 90s kind of quelled it for a while, because everybody's economic circumstance got a little better. Um, well, this is the point I was it, making to Tyrone earlier, is that when people have a good job, all their BS doesn't come to the surface, whether they're racist or misogynist or whatever. When people have a good job, Precisely. society yeah. tends to stabilize because, hey, pe you know, uh, people are working and people have a, you know, a reasonable income. But I think right. that, you know, Eric, there's a piece of authoritarianism that is almost never discussed. And I think it's worth bringing up. We, we talk about authoritarianism in societies as if it was a force of nature, as, as if it's something that just always happens. You can't yeah. stop it. It's you can't socially it engineered. Itself. It is not just socially engineered, it's engineered to a large extent. Now, some and this is the big debate in psychology. If 20% of the American people are authoritarian, um, we know that there's uh, arguably two things that can drive that. One is called temperament, which is your baseline personality, which is probably genetic. Some people are just kind of naturally um, uh, shy and quiet. Other people are naturally loud and boisterous. Other people are naturally fearful. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So there's this temperamental mm -hmm. thing that leans some people toward either being an authoritarian leader or an authoritarian follower. But then the other big mm -hmm. variable is childhood. It, people who don't feel safe during their childhood because they are uh, growing up in poverty, because their parents are abusive toward them, because they're the, the school situation, there's a terrible bully, whatever it may be. For, you know, something that's a small trauma for one person is a life-changing trauma for another person. So it's really hard to generalize. But people who don't feel safe growing up as children tend to grab on to control. They tend to become control freaks or they completely yeah. surrender control to somebody else that they think has ultimate power as a way of dealing with the insecurity and uncertainty that came out of the fears of their childhood. Mm. And, um, the, and this was something that Dr. Spock talked about in the 1950s in his child rearing books and produced a, a revolution in child rearing in the United States. Take good care of your can take good care of your kids, make them feel loved, and all this kind of thing. And at the same, and this was just 30 years after Hitler had overseen the publication of child rearing manuals in Germany that strongly recommended that parents beat their children, which does produce authoritarians. So you know, there's all these pieces to this. But back to you, Eric. Yes, and I, I actually agree with you. And there's a ton of case data on what you referenced. You end up with uh, extremities of one or the other when you have extremity in the childhood. And it's just like the, the child of alcoholic parents who ends up either a teetotaler in very many cases, overachiever, people pleaser, or the other way, and they, they end up kind of surrendering to what took the mom or drunk. dad. Um, personally, I had a, a cop for a father, and he was, you know, kind of a bully. Um, and I was always the littlest guy. I'm 5'6 I'm today, but I always had the biggest mouth. So I had to fight all the time. 
I, it was different mm. in the 70s. Boys could fight. We could, you know, make each other's nose bleed, and mm. there weren't lawyers and counselors. You know, it'd be, break it up. I don't want to see you two I near remember. each other again. And it was enough. You, um, I think that's a big part, Carrie, and your Dr. Spock thing, why we see these extreme explosions by boys with weapons and guns and major incidents is that they can't just kind of boy it out of themselves every once in a while. We're building monsters with the pressures of a lot of our society, and authoritarianism is part of it. Well, that could be. I think, I, I think our principal social safety valve, and we've been loot missing to a large extent, missing this for the last year, is sports. Sports is war by proxy. But, uh, Eric, thank you for the call. We, we've wandered into all kinds of territory here. We'll be right back.